In the past, LGBT people in video games were depicted as villains or perverts. It's an unfortunate truth, but in the past 10 years, many new video games have come out with positive depictions of LGBT people. Sure, some are still villains or just plain crazy, but many are characters that people have grown to love and cherish. I'm going to focus on these games today. So if you want to pick up a controller and play your gay little heart away, then this is the list for you. To start things off, let's talk about the behemoth that is Bioware. Since 2007 with their release of Mass Effect, you've had the option to play as an LGBT character. In the beginning you had limited options for your romantic partners, but your choices grew with each game. Bioware builds many characters with different personalities, sexualities, and genders for you to befriend or romance in each iteration of the game. Another popular series they did this with is Dragon Age. In the current game of Dragon Age Inquisition, there are eight romanceable characters, some straight, some gay, all with hearts for you to win. And that theme spreads across seven different games. Oh, and you also have to save the world or the universe or whatever, no big deal. Another game that I'm sure many of you already love is The Sims. The Sims is a pretty simple life simulation game. You build a character, make a house, find a spouse, and live. What's great is that you've always had the option to be gay in this game. You can have as many or as few partners in this game as you want. Every single sim you build is a polyamorous pansexual, and that's pretty great. In the latest iteration of the game, you can even build a transgender character if you want to. It's such a progressive game that Russia has marked it for adults only. With that, all I have to say is woohoo! Uh, get it? That's, uh, sex in The Sims, never mind. Moving right along, another great game is actually a series. The Fable series to be exact. This series was actually the first mainstream game you ever got the choice to have a same-sex partner in. Technically, romance is optional for this fantasy RPG, where you get to play as either the good, evil, or neutral hero, but it's a fun mechanic to the game. You have to actually visit your spouse often and keep them happy, or else they will cheat on you, or leave you. You have to actually work to maintain that relationship. And that's pretty awesome. The next game isn't inherently LGBT, but you can choose to be. I'm talking about the popular chapter-based game, Life is Strange. You play as Max Caulfield, a girl who moved back to her hometown for school and ends up witnessing the murder of a girl in the school's bathroom. You suddenly discover you have the ability to rewind time, and you've used that power to save the girl, who turns out to be your old best friend from when you were kids, Chloe. During the game, you can choose certain options that will develop your friendship with Chloe beyond friendship. And the final choice of the game is truly heartbreaking. But you can witness a kiss between the two if you play your cards right. This game deals with topics of suicide, sexual assault, murder, and bullying. It's nice to have a little romance in the mix with all these heavy topics. Now we have Final Fantasy XIV. This game is a massive multiplayer online role-playing game or MMORPG where you can choose to marry those of the same sex. You can grind your stats, level up, beat the big bad guys, and do this all with your loving partner. So far, the game has had a single pride parade, calling it Pixel Pride on the Gilgamesh server. I guess that server is a gayberhood in the game, huh? The next game is an extremely popular game, The Last of Us. It's a well-written zombie survival game, is compelling in its storyline and characters, and has one of the best written LGBT characters in video games to date. Many people to this day question if they actually are gay or not, and the creators have confirmed that they are. I'm talking about the rough and tough soul survivor of the town of Lincoln, Bill. Bill had a partner named Frank, who left him to head off on his own. Bill remained in Lincoln to set up a fortress of solitude, which our main characters Ellie and Joel somehow managed to get to, despite the traps and barricades he put into place. His character is written in such a way that you can't tell he's gay just by looking at him. He's not the walking flamboyant stereotype that media often likes to portray, and that right there is good game design. The game gives you two clues about his sexuality. The way he speaks about his old partner, Frank. Frank. Who the hell's Frank? He was my partner. He's the only idiot that would wear a shirt like that. I 
Reckon he didn't want to turn, so he... Yeah, I guess not. And a single gay adult magazine that Ellie steals. Light on the reading, but it's got some interesting photos. Now, now Ellie, that ain't for kids. Whoa! How, how the hell would he even walk around with that thing? Get rid of that. Well, hold Just... your horses. I want to see what all the fuss is about. Oh, why are these all stuck together? Um... <laughs> I'm just fucking with you. Bye bye, dude. Speaking of Ellie, she is another LGBT character in the game. In a downloadable prequel, it is revealed that she had developed feelings for her best friend, Riley. What's wrong? Don't go. Makes you wonder about and excited for the upcoming sequel. At the moment, there is no release date for the sequel, but you can find the trailer on YouTube. The final game I'm going to talk about is the sensational Overwatch. Overwatch is an FPS game with no real story mode, but you get to learn about the characters outside of the game. What's great about this kind of storytelling is that you pretty much get a movie, a comic book series, and a game all at the same time. The game itself is great, but the story behind it is phenomenal. The characters are well written and extremely diverse, from Symmetra being autistic, to Torbjorn being a dwarf, to members of Overwatch being a part of the LGBT community. So far only a single member has been revealed to be gay, and it shocked many players. The reason it was so shocking was because the character was the game's very own spokeswoman. That's right, Tracer. Tracer was revealed to be in a same-sex relationship during the holiday release of the Overwatch comic. She's seen gifting a scarf to her girlfriend Emily, and if you had any thoughts that these two were just gals being pals, they sealed a happy moment with a kiss. Ah, true love. Those are the games I wanted to discuss today. In the comments down below, let me know, what's your favorite game? Do you think these are positive depictions of LGBT people? Do you think despite the positive representation that these games might portray, that the gaming community and video games in general are homophobic? Let me know your thoughts. And with that, I upload every single Wednesday, Friday, and soon, Mondays too, with a nice surprise. I hope you have a good day, I hope you have a good night, wherever you might be. This has been Katie Katz. Subscribe, maybe.